So now let me show you the handouts and how to use these handouts. As I said, these are free and available online. So what you're going to get with the handouts is the lesson plan itself, which instructs you how to go about doing it. It is for middle and high school grades and can be really used for a lot of different, uh, a, different uh, a lot of different applications. The time required for this lesson is five 45 minute course, uh, course periods or two and a half 80 minute sessions with your students. So it could take up to a week long to do this entire lesson plan. So handouts, start with a sheet for the elements of design and then a sheet for principles of design. The grading rubric that I referred to, a fashion croquis to draw on, and a interior design room to decorate. So you would start this lesson by basically having students begin on the elements of design. You would talk to them about line and have them define the word line um, and write it into this section. If you're using the flip book, the definition is right below the word of the element. A line is a path of a point moving through space. There are many types of lines including bold, actual, continuous, diagonal, curved, and so on. So then the idea after the student has written the definition in is they are gonna take some uh, a ruler and possibly um, some different edges and create some lines in their space. And they would do that by just creatively using the ruler to create lines on the space as I've just done there. They can play with width, they can play with color, but really the object of the game with this square is to just create lines and create a design out of lines. So I'm really just ad-libbing here and I haven't got anything at all in mind, but you can talk about the different ways that lines can affect uh, the viewer of the design and talk about also how Lines can create optical illusions. Okay, so I'm almost done with this line. You could also have students go in and label the types of lines that they made, like curved, freeform, straight, thin, thick, wavy. You can have them just detail this square with all of the knowledge that they have. They can also go into a fashion magazine and use post-it notes to write about the details in the design that they have chosen. So they can identify things like these little lines on the skirt are causing some movement in the garment. They can also talk about this line here, drawing the eye across the shoulder. And this is the idea that you're going to do with each and every one of the elements and principles. You can see that in the texture section, you might use a texture board, like we're providing in this kit. You might just use textures that you find around your house. It could be a brick, a brick wall, a sidewalk, uh, wood, uh, something bumpy or furry uh, might make a different texture, but you can see how these wax crayons are really picking up on this texture plate that I have laid beneath the sheet. This is the idea here is that we're creating texture and we're also gonna have the student define what does texture mean? Texture, the definition of texture of course is the way something looks like it would feel. So textures can be smooth, they can be bumpy, they can be rigid, 
um, furry, fuzzy, and so on. This is an opportunity for you to just create and allow your students to create whatever they like in this square as it pertains to texture. Let them talk about it. As they're creating it, they're starting to really zero in on their understanding of what the elements are. When you get to the second sheet, the second sheet explores principles. Now we know that elements are the actual things in a design, like lines and shapes, but principles are more of an overall theory or theme. So things like balance, Balance, you can talk about balance using the flip book, or you can have the students take a picture that they have gotten in a magazine or online, have them fold it in half and decide if it is a mirror image on both sides, which would make it formal balance, or if it is an informal balance where the two sides do not mirror each other, but they somehow balance anyway. Um, harmony. Harmony is another one of those terms where you're going to be blending a lot of the different elements together to create a harmonious design. In this square, not only are you asking the students to define harmony, which is pretty difficult to define, but also that you're having them use three elements together to create harmony. After your students have completed expressing each one of the elements and principles of design, whether in your class with this amazing kit or at home with supplies that they have available to them, they can move on to the designing part. And this is when they really get to put everything together, all the things they know to either create a fashion design or create a room design. Now, you can do them both, give credit for both, doing both, or you can really just focus in on one or the other. So if you are creating, if you're teaching fashion, of course you're gonna wanna just focus in on these male and female croquis. And have students use the same ideas, the same materials to create texture, line, balance, harmony, all of those things here on these printouts. And then they can use their Sharpie markers to label each item. When they're finished, they can go to the rubric and decide have they fulfilled all of the requirements to get the best possible score or have they left things out. Providing the rubric gives them direction and structure that they may need while they're studying on their own. All right, that's all for now. Thanks everybody. Hope you have a great day and come back soon.